The sunny southwestern beaches of Gibraltar are a popular spot for sunbathers during the summer months. One of these beaches is very close to one of Gibraltar's prime Neolithic cave sites, which sits in Gibraltar's southwestern cliffs. Today, high above the gentle sea, the Gibraltar Museum caving unit will descend a sheer wall of rock to visit one of Devil's Falls caves. With a drop of approximately 60 metres below them, safety and careful preparation are of utmost importance in this potentially perilous excursion. So we're here above um, Devil's Fall K, which we're going to visit today. And what we've done in order to um, have a visual that we have everything that we need, uh, we've laid the equipment out in this manner. There's um, four speleologists going down now. We've got our harnesses, we've got our ascending equipment, we've got our descending equipment and this is what we'll be using today to access the cave. Uh, we have uh, Nicky now, he's preparing the anchor system that we're using to access Devil's Fall Cave. This time he's creating the anchor using straps and with a carabiner we're going to use the, the two lines going down uh, as opposed to other times when we used a spider anchor. Uh, it's better on this occasion because we've got a limited space so this manner we can attach ourselves to the rope without getting too close to the edge. With the setup thoroughly checked, our speleologists suit up, ready for the descent. As you can see, we are now getting ready to go down into the cave. Today we're going to be using uh, two inlines due to the fact that it's much safer. There is a, a risk factor in descending and using uh, and doing upsailing, obviously, but it, it's very important for us uh, to be confident in the knowledge that we have and the experience. We take uh, extreme uh, measures beyond what is necessary to be safe. We're gonna descend in two sections. Our first section is about uh, 15 meters, which is, as you can see behind me, is like a straight wall down. Uh, the entrance to the cave is at the very bottom of that wall. Smallish entrance to, to the cave, but once inside it gets much bigger. After abseiling down the sheer cliff, the entrance to Devil's Fall Cave challenges the caving units to another vertical drop of around 40 metres to make it into this large cavern inside the rock. These fissure caves are created by the pushing of the North African tectonic plate against Gibraltar, the rock of which is the first landmass above sea level on the Eurasian plate. Much like other fissure caves in the area, this cave consists of many large and jagged boulders which have wedged themselves in the narrow vertical drops inside the large caverns of the Devil's Fall. The caving unit spends up to three hours negotiating the tight vertical openings, descending down a total of 60 metres into the cave.
We're here on top of a battery which is just above one of the Devil's Fall Caves. The Devil's Fall Caves are a series of caves on the southwestern cliffs of the Rock of Gibraltar. Um, these are all fissure caves. The geology of the rock around this area is all very fractured, natural fractures in the actual bedrock. And um, this is one of the examples that we're going to visit today. The area surrounding the Devil's Fall Caves was known as the Devil's Bowling Green. That was actually due to the fact that it was a natural slope of land and during the sieges the enemy fire would fire on top of, of these defences here and the cannonballs would just roll off this, uh, this green area, hence the name. So as I said, this was a series of, of caves. This is one of the, the only surviving caves called Devil's Fall. A lot of them have suffered either because of the quarrying, they've just disappeared, they, they've been quarried completely, or because of developments they've actually been completely covered up due to cliff stabilization works. And in this cave, when we go down to it, we'll actually see a lot of concrete being poured over parts of the, the entrance. One needs to understand the, the safety aspect when you're actually developing a, a part of Gibraltar and, and you need to stabilize cliffs, etc. Um, but at the same time, you need to preserve the, the natural habitats around the area. Sadly, one of the caves in this area was completely lost due to cliff stabilization works. They completely covered the, the cave with, with concrete. Then they came to us and actually presented a one of the vases that we have in, in the museum. So sadly, we weren't able to actually excavate into the, the cave itself, but we know that um, Neolithic people lived in these caves. So the approach into this cave is not overly complicated, but it did have its challenges. Um, we upsailed down from this battery, down the defensive walls, down the cliff. There is a fig tree in the way, so that made things a bit more complicated. We're getting stuck halfway through. Um, but once we actually cleared that, it was plain sailing into the cave. This particular cave is a typical fissure cave that we see in, in this area of Gibraltar, much like caves like Judge's Cave, which we've already visited. This one in particular, there's not so many boulders as, as we find in Judge's Cave, but it's more sort of a sheer drop. Um, we've got about 20 to 30 meters to negotiate straight down um, the ropes. Um, then we've got a couple of different channels that we, we can have a look at inside, but it, it's mainly just open drops into the cave. Being in such a remote area, seemingly tucked away from human interference, the Devil's Fall offers what should be potentially a haven for bats. Stuart Finlayson from the Gibraltar Museum shares with us the sobering story of the Devil's Fall's once thriving bats population. So the Devil's Fall has always been regarded as one of the major colonies of uh, bats in Gibraltar. In fact, one of the four caves uh, found on the Devil's Fall is referred to as the Bat Rift uh, or the Bat Cave. In the 1960s and 70s, the population uh, of bats using that cave was estimated to be between 10 and 12,000 individuals. In fact, there's there's some records from the from the 70s that I, I recall where a person went in to the Devil's Fall, in fact, uh, and and actually fell out of the cave mouth because he was hit by 2,000 of these mouse-eared bats emerging from the cave trying to escape when they, they realized that he was there. Sadly though, the Myotis Myotis, the greater mouse-eared bat, which is this one here, it was one of the main cave-dwelling species in Gibraltar. This species has now gone completely extinct in Gibraltar. Uh, there's none of them left. These two individuals, as you can see, they're from historical collections found here at the museum. They were collected probably in the 1960s or 70s, and they are actually from the Devil's Fall. It's from a historical collection, it's not something we do anymore. It's museum policy. You do not collect live animals anymore for collections. This species here is one of the Schreiber's bats. This one was also found in the Devil's Fall. And it's, it's only until recently that the Schreiber's bat was using the Devil's Fall cave. So as I said, the population was a thriving population in the Devil's Fall up until quite recently. In fact, Schreiber's bats were there until only uh, a couple of years ago. It seems that the Schreiber's bats are not using the area as much anymore. And it, it all comes down to the, the main issue in Gibraltar, which is light pollution. Light pollution has really severely damaged uh, a lot of the, the populations around Gibraltar. The last estimate was that we've lost 99% of Gibraltar's population of bats in the last 10 years. The remaining populations are really quite small and we have to do our best as a community to try to keep this species going here in Gibraltar. One of the other main factors, apart from light pollution, affecting bats, and specifically here in Gibraltar, they've been hugely affected, is, is by human disturbance. There are some records of one cave in particular which um, 
with a population of 5,000 Schreiber's bats, where some, some people went in with fireworks, lit the fireworks and completely eradicated the colony. It's a sad reality. Human disturbance is, is a huge factor with bats. There's a lot of people out there who like to visit caves because they're curious, because they're interested, and they don't realize the drastic damage that they're causing to some of these animals. So bats are mammals and they live for a very long time. In fact, um, the longest living bat recorded was actually 41 years old when it died. They live for very long, but they only have one pup per couple per year. Some of those will be males, some of those will be females. So therefore, for one of these populations of 5,000 bats to regenerate would take a very long time. For this reason, bats are disappearing in Gibraltar. And one of the programs that we have been working on recently with the Department for the Environment is the installation of bat boxes around Gibraltar. These boxes are specifically designed to hold bats and hopefully we will be able to encourage certain species back to normal, healthy population numbers in Gibraltar. It's up to us to turn the tide and make sure that Gibraltar's bat populations are not completely eradicated. After all, they do us a great favour by feeding on and controlling pests like mosquitoes and cockroaches. If you're interested in installing a bat box in your home and giving these amazing creatures a fighting chance at survival on the rock, please contact the Gibraltar Museum.